Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to be talking about the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. So on the board here what I have is kind of just some quick explanations of how I see inductive and deductive reasoning in a math classroom. So for inductive reasoning, what it means is that we're going to have observations that lead to conclusions. Um, a really good example of this is pattern recognition. So for example, if I have this cup here and I'm going to take pull things out of here, uh, here's what I've got. The first thing I've pulled out is a binder clip. Okay, awesome. Let's pull out something else. Again, I'm going to pull out a binder clip. Awesome. I'm going to take, keep taking things out. Oh, look at that. Another binder clip. If you had to guess what I'm going to pull out of here next, what would you say it was? If you guess binder clip, you're correct. This is pattern recognition. What we notice is that I took out three binder clips and so we came to this conclusion that based on the observations that I'm seeing, that my conclusion would be that the next thing I take out is a binder clip. So what am I going to take out of here next? Did you guess binder clip? Because you're right. It's another binder clip. What if I got you to ask again? Okay, what is in here now? What am I going to take out? If you said anything but an eraser, well, you're wrong. Did you see this coming? Probably not. Pattern recognition would say that we should keep pulling out binder clips based on what we've seen before. But with inductive reasoning, this is where it's a little bit limited. Until I actually check every single thing that's in here, I don't know if my inductive reasoning is correct. I don't know if my observation has read to a has sorry. I don't know if my observation has led to a conclusion that is always true. This is one limitation to inductive reasoning is that we have to test over and over and over. We have to test every single possible case in order to prove that my conclusion is true. Um, in some senses, that might, be, might not be too bad. I mean, I had a lim limited number of things in here. Eventually, I would have ran out and we could have came to a conclusion from there. However, if I had a million things in here, now this becomes, uh, I guess, time consuming. I don't want to do that. So this is kind of what leads into deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is how I like to think about it is that it's conclusions that lead to other conclusions. We start with things that are that we already know to be true and we use those truths to come up with either more complex truths or different types of conclusions. Uh, here's an example. Let's start with apples. Okay, so all apples are fruit. Would you agree with that statement? Yes or no? I hope you're saying yes, all apples are fruit. The next thing that I could then say is that a Granny Smith is a type of apple. Would you agree with this statement? Well, yeah, you go to the grocery store, you're gonna see Granny Smiths and they are apples, awesome. With those two truths, what I could then say is that a Granny Smith is a fruit. Well, yeah, if apples are fruits and Granny Smith is an apple, then Granny Smith is a fruit and we can lead to that conclusion. Where we have to be careful with deductive reasoning is that I have to start with things that I know are absolutely true. Here's an example. Uh, eagles are a type of bird. So we agree with that. Eagles are a type of bird. My next statement is going to be that birds can fly. Okay, if we were going to assume that that's true, then my conclusion would be that eagles can fly. Well, kind of makes sense. Eagles are a type of bird. Birds can fly. So eagles can fly. Makes sense. Here's where we got to be careful. Let's change it to penguins. Penguins are a type of bird. Still true. Uh, birds can fly. We're going to assume that's true. Uh, therefore, penguins can fly. Well, no. Penguins don't fly. Penguins can fly. So what we needed to start with with our two statements is that eagles are a type of bird is true, but birds can fly is actually not always true. So we need to make sure that when we're having conclusions right at the beginning, we have to make sure that those conclusions are true. We have to make sure that those conclusions are right to begin with. So what we're going to talk about now is a couple of examples, and I'm going to show you how we can show patterns using inductive reasoning and then how we can prove them using deductive reasoning. Here's our first example. Show that adding two odd integers will result in an even integer. Okay, let's use inductive reasoning first. We're going to base it on observations. So for inductive, what we're going to show is let's just take two odd integers and let's add them together. So let's go with three and five. When we add those together, we get eight. Awesome, okay, there's one example. Let's try a few more. Let's go with a negative number. Let's go negative one plus seven. Well, that equals six. That's an even number. Let's try 11 and 121. Okay, well, I'm gonna get one plus three, it's gonna be two, and then we got a three, and then we got a one. 
132. Awesome. Even result. Based on inductive reasoning, I can see that the pattern is holding, that when I add two odd integers together, I get an even result. However, unless I am willing to check every single possible combination of integers and add them up to get an even result, I can't actually say that this is going to always be true. This is where deductive reasoning is going to come in. All right, deductive reasoning. What we need to start with is this whole idea of how do I represent an odd number using variables? Because I need to be able to show that this is true for every single odd integer. First, let's start with how do I represent an even in integer and how do I represent an odd integer using variables? All right, let's start with a list. What I always notice is that even numbers, again, two, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, I could keep going up. I could rewrite all of these numbers as 2 multiplied by some other numbers. For example, 2 times 0 equals 0. 2 times 1 equals 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. And 2 times 5 is 10. What we notice is that I can rearrange these numbers into 2 multiplied by some other number. What this means is that I can represent an even number as 2 multiplied by something. In these specific cases, we were talking about 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But I could have kept this pattern going. In general, it's 2 multiplied by something. This can represent an even number. Well, what do we know about odd numbers? Well, odd numbers are everything in between. If we think about how would I have gotten to 1? From zero. Well, I would have went two times zero, and I would have added one. How would I have gotten to three after two? Well, we would have went two times one, and then we add one, and we get three. Powder still continues. Four plus one is five. Six plus one is seven. And that's how we can get to our odd numbers. Essentially, what we're doing is we're taking an even number, and we're adding one to it. That's going to guarantee that I always get an odd number. Two x. Even number. If I add 1 to an even number, I'm always going to get an odd number. So here's what I'm talking about with the deductive reasoning. We're going to use conclusions to work in our favor to come up with more complex conclusions. My conclusions is that I can represent an even number as 2 times some number, and an odd number is 2x plus 1, an even number plus 1. What we should probably set up is what is x allowed to be? In this case, x can be an element of the integers. So meaning that I can add, that x can be any integer. x can't be something like 2.1. Doesn't work anymore. It has to be an integer in order for this to work. Same thing with odd. x has to be an element of integers. Okay, so from here, what do I, how do I use this to come up with a conclusion? All right, well, we're gonna be taking the sum of two odd integers and showing that it can be even. So let's take an odd integer. Let's take exactly what I have here, 2x plus 1. I need to add that to another odd integer. So to ensure that it's going to be different, or it could even be the same, but to represent it in variable wise, I need to use something other than x for my next number. Let's use y. So we've got plus 2y plus 1. So my first odd integer plus my second odd integer. What I'm trying to show is that when I add those two together, that it's going to represent an even number. All right, let's kind of clean this up a bit. What do we got going on? So we've got 2x plus 2y. 1 plus 1 is 2. Beautiful. What I'm trying to show is that in order for this to be even, then it has to be represented in something that looks like this. 2 times something. What I notice about all of these forms is that I have 2x, 2y, and 2. Well, this is all 2 times something. We can factor the 2 out. So we've got 2, factor it out. 2x divided by 2 is x. 2y divided by 2 is positive y, and 2 divided by 2 is positive 1. This is showing that this is always going to be an even number. Why? Because it's 2 multiplied by something. 
And we already know that when I go two multiplied by anything, it's going to give me an even result. So we were using these conclusions that we already knew to be true to come up with a more complex truth that two odd numbers or two odd integers, when I add them together, will result in an even integer. Let's try another example. All right, here's our next example. First, what I need to do is to pick any whole number that is greater than zero. Got something? Perfect. Here's what I need you to do with that number. I want you to take your number and add five. Once you've added five, I want you to take that new number and multiply it by two. I want you to then take that new number and subtract 10. After you subtract 10, I want you to divide your number by the original number that you had started with. What number do you have? Is it two? It should be. No matter what number you picked here, bet you your answer was two. How do we do that? Well, let's start with inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning means that we're going to pick a uh, case example, a specific number. Let's start with three. All right, what I wanted you to do first is take that number and I wanted you to add five to it. So three plus five would give us eight. Next, I wanted you to take that number and multiply it by two, which would have given us 16. Next, what I wanted you to do was to subtract 10. Okay, 16 minus 10 gives me six. Last thing I wanted you to do was to take that number and divide by the original number that you started with. Well, okay, six divided by the number that I started with was three, which gives me two. Okay, awesome. Inductive reasoning works. We have a specific example and I started with three and it ends with two. Hmm, weird, right? Well, if we pick any number, let's go with 10. I'm gonna add five. I'm gonna times by two. Divide by the number that I originally started with. Actually, sorry, what was that? No, subtract 10, which I, which I didn't do. Sorry, 20, I have to subtract 10 first. I almost forgot my own trick. So 30 minus 10 is 20. Divide by the original number that we have. Well, 20 divided by 10 is two. It works again. How do we prove that this is always going to work? This is where deductive reasoning comes in. All right, my original prompt was pick any whole number greater than zero. You could have picked anything. You could have picked five, you could have picked 10, you could have picked a million, you could have picked whatever you wanted. The result was always gonna be two. Well, how we compensate for the fact that you could have picked any number is let's just say you could pick any number. X, throw a variable in there. The first step that I wanted you to do is to take that number and add five. Well, if I take X and I add five to it, I get X plus five. The next step that I wanted you to do was to multiply your number by two. Well, we need to multiply x plus 5 times 2. All right, well, 2 times x is 2x. 5 times 2 is 10. All right, we got 2x plus 10. The next thing I want you to do is to subtract off 10. Well, 2x plus 10 minus 10 is just 2x. Last thing I want you to do was to divide by the number that you started with. In this case, I want to take 2x and I want to divide by what I started with. Well, 2x divided by x is 2. Here's our deductive reasoning. No matter what number I start with, the result will always be 2. I hope through these few examples that you're able to see the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. If you have any questions, please let me know. Have a good day. See ya.